Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today, once again, I am in Germany with something made from the German whiskey manufacturer named Aurium. Aurium 1865. Aurium actually means gold. And so there's a man with the name Axel Ritt. Some of you may know him from the Grave Digger. Um, a more of a heavy metal band that I personally have very little connections with so far. And Axel Ritt was sitting at home one Saturday evening with a glass of whiskey in the one hand and looking at his guitars in the other hand and thinking here about the sound properties of the wood of his guitars, thinking about the resonance property um, of actually the sound waves bouncing off from the wood and how that just creates a wonderful sound. And he had known that people have actually done um, experiments, sending in sound waves from speakers, how that might change the wood, deep freezing the wood, and then building different guitars or bass guitars out of that. And he just kind of had the idea of what happened if I would actually just dip my guitar into the whiskey, let it sit for a little while and take it back out. Would it change those sound properties of the guitar? So he said, let's try it. <laughs> Creative guy, right? So Axel Ritt called up his favorite whiskey company, which is Aurium here in Germany. And they said no problem because they actually have already done a special with him and his band called Grave Digger. And it's actually the best-selling whiskey of that company at the moment, if I'm correctly informed. And his guitar, by the way, from Axel Ritt is the Iron Finger. And it's actually that red, red, black and white striped. And therefore, that's the design. Now, um... Then he needed, of course, to find a manufacturer of guitars and bass guitars. So he called up the company he's worked with before as well, which is Framus slash Warwick, which is one, if not the biggest producer in Europe of um, guitars and bass guitars and so on. They said, no problem. We'll do this. So what they did is they basically did the same thing with Maker's Mark. So you take a barrel of whiskey and then you put the wood into the barrel after it's been aged for a certain time. All right, and so this is the Aurium um, Grave Digger 1865. If I'm correctly informed, that should be a six-year-old whiskey. And um, after those six years, uh, six years, five years, so it's actually, um, it doesn't say here, does it? Wow, um, so sorry. Um, after it's been aged for a certain amount of time, they actually put staves or just wood pieces into the barrel and let them age for a few weeks up to a month or so. And for the guitar, they use maple, they use ebony, and they use mahogany. Ma 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 um, yeah, German mixing with English, I'm sorry. For the bass player, which will come out later on, they are used um, maple and olive wood. And for this, the grave digger, they actually used swamp oak and chestnut. So just imagine the same process with um, Maker 64. You put those that wood in there, and later on you use that wood to make actually the body of the guitar or the bass. Now there's some instructions on here, and it, you, ha you have this nice little thing. So the instructions number one says, pull out the USB stick. This is not a guitar, this is a USB stick. Oops, almost dropped it. Da da da. So you can see that here, our USB stick. And on this UB, USB sticks, um, there's videos from the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, 2010s from his group, the Grave, Dick, Grave Diggers, and uh, other groups as well. Um, I'm not at all interested in this. Sorry, not my music. Um, someone else is going to actually probably buy this bottle from me after it's halfway empty and use it. So it says, take out the USB stick. Plug it into your stereo system. Turn up the music as loud as possible. Pour in four CLs. So a double finger pour of whiskey in your glass. And then enjoy the whiskey and ignore the knocking of the neighbors on the door. Which I thought was a very unique way of advertising this whiskey. Alright, so now Aurium 
I've never had a bottle. I've always bought the um, the sample so far. Has one of the coolest bottles I've ever seen. Great color, by the way, guys. All right, this is really, 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 really dark red ebony type of, um, or dark ruby type of red even. Um, and if you look, there's all these curves. So it's like, like a beautiful woman with all the curves in all the right places. Even in the front is actually here. It's curved inward. Um, just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you very much, Aurium. Great, great bottle design. The only thing that's not perfect, perfect, um, but I still like it, is actually the cork. It's a very thin cork. Um, and then they use uh, an artificial cork here. All right. But it has a nice wide opening. It reminds me of, for example, here from... Um, uh, from Signatory, their decanters. Um, they actually have a very, very similar. Oh, actually, reminds me of Elijah Craig. Elijah Craig, twelve year old. That's about the same type of opening there. And so you have to be a little bit careful that you don't pour too much in your glass at once. So I'm gonna just a healthy pour there. Forty-seven percent um, ABV, non-chilled, filtered, no coloring added, and whoops, sorry. There's a total of. 280 bottles worldwide. This is basically a single cask. Back when Axel Ritt had this idea, his idea was to make guitars. His idea was to make bass guitars out of the wood. He did not think of the whiskey as being something you could sell afterwards. Now, of course, Aureum, the company who makes the whiskey, said, this is going to be great. We're going to sell the whiskey as well. And they did that. And it worked out just fine. The guitar is sold out. The um, the Iron Finger just came out on the market, and the ba bass player will be arriving probably sometime right before Christmas. Who knows? All right, so um, Whiskey Base 117729, if you'd like to know, and I paid 99 euros for this, about $120. Single bottle, single cask, not um, cask strength. But this is actually a bottle which has or will influence the whiskey slash, slash music industry in the future. At least that's my personal hope. <laughs> All right, the nose. This is a very unique nose. The first thing I'm getting um, right now is teak, cherry coke, as well as a um, Russell Stover... Um, cherry chocolate covered um, praline. Yep, that's a good description. And if I didn't know better, I'd actually say this is a single malt, 100% malted barley. I would say there's a little tiny bit of rye in there as well. It's got that spiciness. Now, I have not, I've tried, I think, four different Aureums. I think they have like 12 different products at the moment. Some single casts out there, some differently aged products and so on. They actually have one where they just also finish it in chestnut. And I've tried many different things, as I said, four or five, I guess. Um, and so far, there hasn't been a single bottling from Aureum where I went, wow. They've been all around the C, maybe a C plus, maybe a C minus range. So the nose is nice it, it's it's not a glenn farkless 40 it's not a bottle of wow it's not a george t stag it's but it's nice it's intriguing it's got a lot of that cherry in there it's almost like i'm sorry to say this people it's almost like an interesting um, barrel pick of four roses single barrel but it's got a lot more in there going on all right, so we have swamp oak and we have chestnut staves that have wood pieces that have been added and matured for a certain time. All right, let's try it. Mm, okay. Hmm. Unique. Positively unique. Mm. Fairly long finish. Nice. I really still get those cherries. It's amazing. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, at the very beginning, it's almost a tiny bit sweet. 
and then that cherry coke kind of kicks in but then what really happens which is kind of weird is you get almost like a punch in the taste buds of tannins without the bitterness so it's a whole pile load of oakiness um it must be the swamp oak or it must be the chestnut that actually just overpowers it for maybe about three seconds then it subdues then the alcohol kicks in a tiny little bit and then at the end you kind of have a little bit of the tannins but then that chocolatey cherryness takes over and just continues all the way imagine a cherry coke with a piece of chocolate that's basically what this is and that's good that's actually very very good this is going to get in my book a b minus and i it's very 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 seldom that i actually give b anything for a german whiskey nice as i said i paid 100 euros or 99 euros so about 120 dollars for this now i'm going to actually give it a c for that why can i give a german whiskey a c which costs 120 dollars well this is music and whiskey history this is a single cast, 280 bottles worldwide, and I get to be part of that story. Yay! And just because of that, I really think this is worth that price. Um, the the guitarist was, or the guitar was sold out um, within weeks over here in Germany, and I do know that some bottles made it into the international market as well of those 280 or 290 bottles that were actually sold back then. Um, having the ability to actually get one of the 280 bottles is very nice. Had I bought it on his site from Axel Ritt, I think I would have actually have gotten a signatured or signed um, box there. But I was uh, not my music, not my thing, so I didn't wasn't really worried about that. Um, yeah, my question of the day, twofold. First. Of those out there in the world that know anything about more of the heavy metal, hard rock music, it's not even rock, it's heavy metal, um, does anyone actually know Gravedigger and Axel Ritt? Have you heard of him? Do you like his music? If so, please write it down in the comments and go, hey, Gravedigger is awesome, or not my cup of tea. And the second thing is um, weird wood finishes. As I said, um, the guitarist used maple, ebony, and mahogany. Got it right that time. The bass player will use um, maple and olive wood. And this will actually, this has the swamp oak and the chestnut in it. What type of weird wood finishings have you had recently? I just bought the um, Long Branch from Wild Turkey that actually uses mesquite. What other types of wood have you recently had in your whiskey that has changed the character and the flavors of the whiskey? Please write that down if you'd be so kind. Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare, 280 bottles, and exotic. Look at this design, ironwood, made by a guitarist of a band that is internationally successful axel ritt what else can you ask for please like please subscribe and please tell others about this crazy guy over here in europe tasting rare and exotic whiskies see you soon my videos come out mondays wednesdays and fridays bye bye